time. Thank you, Lyndall. And coming up later in the program, the Greens leader Christine Milne about her party's policy on paid parental leave. And NX Votes takes a look at the politicians' reactions to the royal baby. But now, to discuss the events of today, I'm joined by Labor Parliamentary Secretary Amanda Rishworth and Liberal MP Jane Prentice. Welcome to you both. Hi, Lyndall. Hi, Amanda. We'll go first to education, and the government hasn't yet got Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia or the Northern Territory over the line on school funding reforms, but it did today get the tick from the Catholic education system, while Kevin Rudd is this evening holding talks with the Victorian Premier. But one thing's for sure, we don't want Victorian children in the government system to miss out on what children in the non-government system are getting and children in other states are getting. And I believe so long as the Victorian government and the national government focus on the children, they're the future, then I think we can come to a mutually agreeable outcome in the best interest of us Victorian school children. Jane, the Catholic Education Commission says it's confident no school will be worse off and the arrangements will deliver significant increases over time for every child in the Catholic system. If the Catholic system's confident of that, how can the coalition say no to it? Well, Lyndall, that might be uh, an independent arrangement that the Catholic schools have come to with uh, the Rudd government. But the bottom line is that uh, a lot of schools in Queensland will be worse off. I mean, it's, it's quite appropriate. They're watching uh, reruns of The Hollow Men at the moment on ABC because there was one great skit where they promised lots of money but nothing in the short term. It's not until 20. 18-19 that the funding will kick in and schools will be worse off in the immediate years. The coalition absolutely supports increased funding for schools but the bottom line is they can't afford to be worse off. It's like offering someone a salary increase and saying but you're not going to get it for five years and in the short term you're actually going to be worse off. Uh, so I understand why people like Campbell Newman won't sign up to this. Amanda, this was always going to be a program that ramped up over time. Does it ramp up too slowly? Well, look, we are providing all schools, and you would have seen uh, statements by the Catholic education sector to say that there is indexation from next year from schools, and over time that uh, amount of money going to school sectors and schools increases. Of course, no school, and it's, it's misleading uh, for Jane to be saying that schools are going to be worse off and they're not going to get as much money. Uh, they are going to continue not to be worse off, to continue to get more money over time for more resources, more help in the school classroom, more one-on-one -on -one help and a range of things. And it's disappointing uh, that the coalition continues to play politics. We've seen the shadow minister out there playing politics with this. Uh, well, the independent schools are on board, the Catholic schools are on board, New South Wales, ACT, South Australia are on board. Victoria, we're working through it. I mean, up there in, uh, in Queensland, we see schools are one of the lowest funded per school in the country. Quite frankly, it should be an obligation on Campbell Newman uh, and the other Liberal Party premiers not to play politics with this, but to sign up and get on board with it. Jane, the Coalition's policy is to keep the current system for about a year and then look at it again. So it is not possible, is it, for you to say, going to this election, that, that a coalition would deliver what the Catholic education system says it's getting from this deal, which is substantial increases over time. Well, it's great that they're going to get increases. All I know is the fact that many of our schools and a lot in my electorate will be worse off. Have you, have for you the seen next the figures the government, the government put out on, on what well, Queensland schools would get? Yeah, I've seen the most recent ones. They do keep changing and we can't forget how then Prime Minister Gillard went to Western Australia and realised that she got the $300 million figure wrong and said here's another $600 million and they still haven't signed up. So uh, as we regularly see, the Labor Party announces things first and then works out the detail later and usually gets it wrong. This is a government that has cut funding to universities, cut funding to student income support, cut funding to apprenticeship and training. So why we should trust them to That's get it right. That's just not the case, uh, Jane. Don't. don't mislead people. You have cut, that is just not the you case. Have cut the funding by I, over I, $300 million. We have, we have increased 
funding overtime to universities. We're asking them to make an efficiency dividend uh, to fund this school process. Uh, but of course, the coalition says, oh yes, we're going to spend money on this and spend money on that. Won't say where their uh, savings will come from, won't say where their cuts will be. So quite frankly, the school communities are saying, let's do this. Let's finally give the right resources to our schools. Let's finally empower school communities to make decisions. A whole range of important Important uh, quality teaching opportunities, quality learning. It's it's really time for the Liberals to stop their negativity Amanda, and get on board with this. Amanda, the government's putting a lot of lot of effort in trying to convince Victoria to sign up to the agreements. How badly do you need Victoria to make it look like you have got a a majority of states, a majority of students in the country on board? Well, look, uh, with uh, a number of states and the Catholic and independent school sector, there is a significant momentum for this change. There are significant numbers of students right around the country. And what I think the Minister was making clear today is that Victorian state public school students shouldn't be left behind uh, when we've got extra funding flowing to the Catholic sector, to the independent sector, that he wants to see state government students also receiving uh, extra support whether it's extra SSOs, whether it's extra equipment, whether it's language and literacy specialists in classrooms, we want to see that money flowing. We so might... it is important for them to sign up for the benefit of our country and for we... the benefit of their students. We might move on now because the Greens have released their paid parental leave scheme and as I mentioned we'll talk to Christine Milne a little later. Their scheme is very similar to the Coalition's and it was welcomed in a fashion by Coalition frontbencher Barnaby Joyce. I'm happy that even a stop clock is right twice a day, isn't it, Lyndall? So if they're supporting our scheme, I suppose we'll say you know, thank you for that. We are obviously offering a tax break with ours as well. It is a, a scheme that is, um, there's a levy on the larger companies. And um, it's a, a clear statement that we believe that a person's income stream should not be affected by their choice to have children as um, the prince and princess, or well, the prince and princess of Wales would be telling you right now. Uh, Jane and Amanda, we might come to the royal baby in a moment, but first, uh, Jane, uh, the coalition's scheme is, if you pardon the pun, Tony Abbott's baby. Would you be willing to cut it back just a bit? The, the Greens have an income threshold of 100,000, you have 150. Would you be willing to scale it back a bit if it meant guaranteeing it passage through the parliament if you win the election? Look, Linda, we've been consistent with this policy now for over three years, and it's great that the unions and the Greens are now supporting it. Uh, Australia is actually one of only three of some 34 OECD countries that uh, doesn't pay uh, parental leave on, on the basis of a person's salary. Uh, we pay holiday leave with loading uh, based on a person's salary, but we don't pay parental leave. So I think it's uh, quite strange that we wouldn't support this. And the bottom line is the people that will benefit most are the low to middle income earners who don't have access to some of the generous schemes such as the public service schemes. Would, would it matter then if you, if you just uh, trimmed the income level a bit, if that meant you were absolutely guaranteed of support to get it through the parliament? Well, do you think people want to trim their holiday leave? I just think it's, it's not a welfare. This is uh, about employment and I think it's only fair that people should get the same level of salary as they earn. Uh, Amanda, the government's had its scheme in place for a little while yet. Given the reaction of the unions and the Greens, do you think there's a case for, for Labor's scheme, for the scheme to become more generous over time? Well, look, what we, we believe that our scheme is a fair scheme. Uh, what it does, it ensures that people uh, get, uh, a, to, uh, get a payment to cover uh, their time. Our pay parental scheme, we're the only party that actually acted on it. Now, hearing Barnaby Joyce, I think it would be a bit difficult to say to a cleaner or a childcare worker, uh, you pay more tax, you pay more tax, you pay more, uh, pay more for your groceries, pay more for your mortgage and subsidise the royal family in terms of pay parental. I'm not sure what Barnaby Joyce was saying there, that, uh, that uh, um, the Duchess of Cambridge should get paid uh, for parental leave. I mean, what we're looking here is a scheme uh, that 
it, that doesn't have fairness at its core. It doesn't have fairness when uh, someone that's on $100,000 uh, might get paid $50,000 or $150,000 with the coalition scheme, getting paid $75,000 from taxpayers, but a cleaner only getting paid $20,000 as part of a scheme. But the, costing of, but the costing of the green scheme, which is it would be funded on a similar basis to the coalition, most of it is funded by a... a levy on big business, about $2 billion over four years comes from the taxpayer's purse. So it is, it is in that way, mostly funded by business, isn't it? Well, I do find um, it quite ironic that uh, the Greens are... are for uh, extra tax on business, which I would expect that to be, but certainly not the coalition. And I find that it's strange that the coalition is for more tax on business. They claim to be the party for business. We've seen uh, many, many business leaders come out and say that this will be passed on. Whether it's supermarkets, that will get passed on uh, to the average person at the supermarket. Whether that's banks, it'll get passed on to their mortgages. So it is odd when the coalition is out there saying, we are the best friend of business, but we're going to be a higher taxing government uh, than the Labor government when it comes to business so that we can pay for a, really what is an unfair paid parental leave scheme. So it is, I would expect that from the Greens, not necessarily uh, from the Coalition. And we've seen business come out and say that they don't believe, some have said they don't believe it's ever going to happen under Tony Abbott. Uh, it varies, but certainly business has con been condemning this as something that will not, uh, that will lead to costs being passed on. Uh, Jane, uh, just quickly, it is, it is the one problem with your plan, isn't it, that, that you promise to, to be a lower tax in government, you want to ta cut taxes, you complain about the carbon price being passed on, yet you're proposing a levy on big business which will be passed on. But this, I mean, is Amanda suggesting, for example, that people, if they're on lower income, should get paid more for holiday leave? Uh, I mean, we need to look at this rationally. And if they people get, get paid, paid by holiday their employer, leave... employer, Jane. Well, just, yes, just but let Amanda, Jane answer. Yeah, so why shouldn't they get parental leave, which I think is actually more important to be having a baby uh, and takes more money than actually going on holidays, why shouldn't they get that at the same level as, as their salary? Now, I just don't see how you can argue that. Now, I might ask a, a well, quick well, question. We, we, I might ask you a quick question. The government doesn't pay for their sorry, holiday leave. Sorry, Jane. Amanda, we're about to run out of time. I'll ask you a quick question about what's been the issue of the day, the talking point. Uh, that's the royal baby. Uh, a, a boy who, if he becomes monarch, it might not happen for, f for 50 years or so. Jane, what's the chances of Australia still being a constitutional monarchy then? Oh, heavens, are we on to that already? I thought we were still <laughs> celebrating. I'm in, I'm in shock because Brisbane's going to go blue uh, and we definitely don't do that after the state of origin. But in this case, the celebration is so big, uh, we're going to light up Brisbane as blue uh, to celebrate the birth of the Royal Prince. And I think uh, any other discussion about the future uh, could be left for at least a week or so, surely, while we all celebrate. Uh, Amanda, is this a, is this a subject that can wait for a, for a period of time? Oh well, look. It's so, certainly a wonderful occasion uh, for the uh, for um, the the royals. I think it's very exciting having a baby come in. Uh, in terms of where Australia goes in the future and whether or not we become a public a republic, that's obviously uh, for uh, for a constitutional referendum that will happen uh, over time if that's the will of the people. Um, obviously, um, we have had a referendum. It didn't get passed. Whether or not it happens in the future will be uh, the will of the people. But it it is an exciting opportunity uh, to celebrate and indeed Australia will always be linked with the UK. We have our history tied with the UK so it is something that I'm sure many people are, are very pleased and celebrating a special time. On that note, that's what we have to leave it. Amanda Rishworth and Jane Prentice, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Lindor. Thanks, Amanda. And that is Capitol Hill for now. Here's Matt Cargill with NX Votes.